Triple B and E, which is? Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Now I've heard it called beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. <laughs> <laughs> but I think either works. You just have to switch the second two B's around, mm -hmm. and then it's th then it's the same. It's the same, yeah. So instead of triple B and E, it's triple B and E. Well, a warm welcome to you all. I'm JJ. I'm a life coach, and I eat mostly meat. I'm Eric. I'm a novelist, and I eat mostly meat. And one thing that I think gets overlooked sometimes okay. about carnivore is that it is an elimination diet. Did you know that? I did. <laughs> but we talk about it so much, we get so used to it that we kind of forget that mm -hmm. if you're coming from the sad American or sad Western diet point of view, it is a extremely elimination-y diet. It is, yeah. Now, I first dealt with elimination diets back when I had to give up gluten. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So I gave up gluten. That was the elimination diet right there. I was so right skeptical. You were very... I thought it was just woo-woo nonsense. <laughs> but then what happened? It improved your health. <laughs> it improved it so much that you were the one who'd be able to sense if I had accidentally ingested gluten. Yeah. You would usually be the one saying, I'd be like, oh, I don't feel well. I have brain fog. I had a... And you'd say, could there be a chance that you had gluten? And I'd go, oh my gosh, I got a Subway salad. Yeah, I did get a Subway salad. I think I was. <laughs> kind of convenient to be able to do that. <laughs> the secret is out. The secret is out. Yeah, so I did, I eliminated gluten. It's been about 13 years now. And then also in that first year of healing, when I gave up the gluten, my health was not great. I had no energy, horrible brain fog, hormonal havoc. <laughs> it was just not good. So I had a year of healing with other eliminations too. Like I wasn't eating dairy. I know that was out of the... And all sorts of like weird things that I had to eliminate. I know they mostly wanted me on paleo too. I remember that. That was when I got introduced to the paleo diet. Well, and then I got the book Whole30. You did, yeah. And so it it came into being as a thing because then I knew about it. <laughs> so then it was an actual legitimate yeah, it thing. Yeah, it's a real thing once <laughs> I've read a book about it. And we did Whole30. We did uh, several rounds. I know of one for sure. I don't know <laughs> if I did more than one or not. Well, I think we did more than one, but I'm not sure if we did it for the full 30 or not. Mm, that might have be where it like gets... Like a whole 15. Or 21 or something like I that. I know that I've done the whole one many, many times. <laughs> now, whole 30, I don't remember the specifics. I know you eliminate any sweetener, any sugar, any sweetener yeah. at all. Um, I believe it was also paleo based as well. So there's no. It was, but they. <clears throat> I want to say they allowed beans and um, well, sweet potatoes. Oh well, yeah, sweet potatoes for sure. <laughs> but it's been so long, I don't really remember the the details no. of it. No, I know it was hard. Like we're implying, it was hard to stick to. It was, although now as carnivores, it would feel like a feeding frenzy of <laughs> bad foods on. Eating it, all that's allowed on Whole30. It was, but with any of those elimination diets, there was a lot of learning new recipes and looking yeah. online for what you can eat pure and what what condiments can you eat. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was a yeah. big deal. So yeah, and I know that you also have done, you did like a low FODMAP or something like that. I don't remember yeah, the details. That didn't last very long. That was specifically under a dietitian's guidance to treat IBS. Hmm. And whatever it was, it made it significantly mm. worse. So I didn't stick with it. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea of eliminating stuff that is hard for your body to handle makes some obvious sense. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you put your hand on a hot stove, <laughs> stopping doing that would be like, I think, the number one move. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, say you were poking yourself in the eye, like um, my brother told me to stop doing <laughs> while he was making me do it. That would be something that you would stop doing because yep. it would hurt. Yeah. Uh, 
So why do you think that with food, it's so controversial to just stop eating certain ones? Well, I think it depends on the level of elimination. So some, if you tell someone you're doing Whole30, they're probably like, great, great on you. Yes, that's wonderful. You know, they know you're eliminating sugars primarily and, and maybe some dairy and, and those are things, and grains, those are things everyone's heard of and, yeah, and it's su- kind of commonly known. I suppose that eliminating sugar, pretty much everybody can get behind, even though they secretly hate you for doing it because <laughs> they want to go out with you and have lattes. Yes, they do. But oh. uh, we're not talking about just elim- eliminating sugar on mm-hmm. carnivore because the point of the elimination isn't exactly the same um, for each of the things that are dropped from the diet. So getting rid of sugar versus getting rid of beans and grains, yeah, we're getting rid of carbs, but each of those has an evil that comes along with it that's different. But that evil that comes along with the grains and the beans, I'm going to use that example, We've been told most of our lives that those are healthy. So, I mean, that's where the controversy also comes in, is that we've been conditioned around the old food pyramid and the my plate. And is there a food compass now, I think I've heard? I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. So, obviously, the sugars we have, our blood blood sugar goes up, we get an insulin response. Mm -hmm. And if you've watched our channel at all, we know we're all about trying to keep that from happening. Mm -hmm. The beans come with the lectins. Lectins, yes. Which, I don't know what they do, but they're not good for you. (laughs) You know, I can't remember either. (laughs) They're not good. But I actually, a few months before I started Carnivore, I actually, it was about a half year, I read a book on lectins. And that's the first I had heard about it. And the elimination of lectins. And I really... Even though I'd done paleo and stuff, and it was probably some paragraphs in a book here and there, this was a whole book on the evils of lectins. I, I don't remember the name of it right now. So beans come with carbs and lectins. Yeah. Grains, wheat, wheat anyway, comes with gluten mm-hmm. and carbs. Yeah. And once those carbs are in the bloodstream, it's you might as well have just eaten sugar. Um, I used to get so mad at you for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think I said it? <laughs> No, I said it because it was true. It was true, but I didn't want... I mean, they were healthy. So Bread it is wasn't. Cake. It wasn't the same in my mind when I was under that mm-hmm. mindset that I'd been conditioned yeah, to. Spaghetti is cake. Bread is cake. Yeah. It's all cake. It's all cake. Uh, and then there's this whole other class of things that we eliminate, which are the seed oils, mm. which uh, is currently controversial because mm-hmm. the seed... Oils do lower LDL, cholesterol, which many think contributes to heart disease. But there's a strong cohort of scientists who have a raised eyebrow. I can't do one eyebrow at that um, theory Mm -hmm. and don't buy it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, the seed oils are full of like linoleic acid, which is inflammatory to the brain. Mm -hmm. I don't know what linoleic acid is. I don't know what it does, but I've heard it's not good. You know, Car- I, I didn't buy into the seed oil thing a whole lot at first. Me neither. But Carrie from Homestead Howe did a cruise, stayed completely carnivore on it, and started experiencing mood issues and energy issues, and he felt it was that mm. everything was cooked in seed oil. So I went, mm, Okay, but yeah, that's Carrie, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I trust you, Carrie, but mm, but recently we've been eating at a lot of restaurants as we've moved properties, and I noticed my diet wasn't as tight, so I can't point directly to the seed oils like Carrie can, yet I think it, I think it really made an impact on me. Well, on a cruise. Mm-hmm. Eating carnivore meals at the buffet. Oh, yeah, we did do felt that. Felt gross. We did do that on our last cruise. Yes. And so that pork belly and whatever, I don't know if it was cooked in some sort of vegetable oil or something mm-hmm. like that. Plus, it didn't taste very good. <laughs> 
So maybe, yeah, maybe. Is linoleic, linoleic acid an omega-6? I don't know. You're asking something the wrong in, Something in my mind makes that connection, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we know that the omega-6s, you, you want them in the correct ratio. Mm -hmm. And there's a ratio. <laughs> We're not telling you what it is. But when we eliminate the seed oils, we are presumably getting closer to the correct ratio because we're not in inundating ourselves with yeah inundation the yeah so another uh elimination diet that i've done is keto wait what <laughs> what i've never i don't know if i've ever heard keto called an elimination diet before i'm sure it's been called that by somebody well i'm sure it has <clears throat> been but it's i haven't been, heard it's it. been called a fad diet it has, yeah. So right off the bat, you know, it's probably good then. <laughs> Wasn't there like a, there was like cl this cleanse that was going around 10, 15 years ago that was like, I want to say lemon juice and cayenne yeah. pepper or yeah. something like that. Now that's a fad. <laughs> Keto is just a way of eating that works for many people. So what does that eliminate then? But it eliminates the breads and the sugars just because you the, can't have that many carbs. Mm -hmm. So keto, from a keto point of view, you're just count, making sure you're not getting too many carbs. So you would be favoring um, lower carb vegetables and stuff like your broccolis and yeah, maybe a little bit of kale. Yeah. But... The broccoli and the kale comes with its own problems, mm -hmm. which is oxalates. <laughs> and it's probably been sprayed with some crap you don't want to consume. Well, yeah, yeah. Another elimination diet is vegetarianism. That is true. And veganism. Mm -hmm. So I suppose veganism is to vegetarianism as carnivore is to keto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although you could be a vegetarian keto Yes, some some people do that. Yeah, where you consume a ton of olive oil and avocado. Avocado, yeah. Avocado. I think that's a yeah. But as far as it goes, carnivore is the ultimate elimination diet. Mm. Um, because it is also the ultimate inclusion diet. Mm. What do I mean? What do you mean? I was hoping you were going to answer the question. Oh, well, this is your brainstorm on the inclusion diet. I know it was my brainstorm, but it was so brilliant. <laughs> I wanted to enjoy experiencing it by having you talk about Reflect it. Reflect it back Rather than me talk about it. Well, one of the reasons it's an inclusive diet is that it contains the nutrients we need. All of the nutrients. Does it have vitamin uh, uh, vitamin B12 in it? It does have vitamin B12. Does it have um, protein in it? It does have protein. Does it have... And, and complete amino acid profiles. Does it have riboflavin? It does have riboflavin. Does it have... Um, uh, taurine? It does have taurine. Uh Vitamin D3? Can you get that, that through carnivore? You can get it through carnivore, oh. yeah. Yeah. Um, can you get any iron from it? Oh, yes. You can get iron. Not only iron, but heme iron, which is from, <laughs> let's face it, heme. It's like from animal flesh. Hemoglobin? Hemoglobin, blood. Yeah, blood. Isn't that from a Def Leppard song? Untergliebin, globin, hemoglobin. <laughs> No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> now, what's interesting, though, is that if you are eating a plant-based diet, a lot of the nutrients you just named are not in a plant-based diet. They're found in dairy, eggs, seafood. Meat. Meat. Yes, that's it. Meat. <laughs> So, so if you're vegetarian, eh, vegetarian's okay. You can eat eggs usually at least. But if you're vegan, I know you have to do a lot of supplementation to get the nutrients you need. Especially the B12. Yeah. Because you just cannot get that from a plant. Mm -mm. Um, also, the red meat, well, I suppose any meat, the, the human digestive tract is really good at extracting the nutrition from the meat. 
Yes. Whereas the plants, it seems to struggle to get the good stuff out. It does. Yes. Yes. And I don't remember everything about that. No. There, but there are anti-nutrients that block absorption. <gasps> yeah. Like Wonder Woman's bracelets. <laughs> Her bracelets, yeah. <laughs> because if you think about it, say it's, I don't know, broccoli. And it's chock full of some vitamins and minerals. And so because those are present in the broccoli, objectively, scientists and nutritionists would go, oh, well, then you should eat those because then you'll get them. Yeah. The problem is, can you get them from it? Yeah. Whereas if an animal eats the piece of broccoli and does its digestion and then brings those minerals and other nutrients into its flesh and then you eat the flesh... Now you can really get them. Yeah, and you're specifically talking about a certain kind of animal that has a totally different digestive system than humans. Yes, and let's not be obtuse. I'm talking about a cow. (laughs) It has four stomachs. Or any other ruminant, yeah. And are all ruminants ungulates? Oh, I don't know. I want to say they are, Mm -hmm. but I don't know that for sure. Do deers or ungulates, do they have um, four stomachs? I don't know. I don't know. We're carnivores, and we don't know how many stomachs our food has. <laughs> but apparently, they whatever, however many stomachs they have, and whatever their intestine. I know the intestines are different as well. Yeah. Um, and you can feel free to put it in the comments, but we still won't remember <laughs> next time we have this talk. Um, I mean, it blew my mind to understand that their digestive system is designed to do exactly what you just said, which is bring the nutrition out of the plants they eat and deliver it to us. (laughs) They are nutrient concentrators. Yes, that's great. Upon which we evolved by eating them. Yeah, yeah. Including them in the diet in higher amounts Mm -hmm. is good for us carnivores. And it's part of why we derive the anti-inflammatory benefits of the diet because this always comes back we talk a lot about steak and butter gang Mm -hmm. and i'm not involved in the community there at all (laughs) (laughs) we are members but yeah we don't don't go to i don't go anywhere (laughs) i just listen to videos and jj tells me what to do and (laughs) but one of the things i just love about their discussions is this idea that you can be overweight and undernourished. Oh my goodness. It is such a hard concept to grok because it seems so counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. You see some, you know, you look in the mirror and you're like, I weigh 300 pounds. How could I be undernourished? And you see kids who are way overweight in their eating the public school lunch and breakfast and they're undernourished because mm-hmm. they're being fed crap mm-hmm. that has no actual nutrition. It has energy in it. Yeah. As carbs that they can burn to actually keep the system, the lights are on. Yes. But that's about it. Yeah. And once you start inundating your system with all of this nutrient dense red meat, and the body starts learning how to go, oh, yeah, okay, I understand. I, oh, I get it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It, gets, it starts bringing that on board. But it doesn't immediately transform you from 300 pounds to 150 or whatever your goal might be. Because at first, all systems need to top up. Oh. And it was not something that I'd ever thought in those terms. But when Bella talks about her long healing process, Mm -hmm. the topping up isn't just getting the protein into muscles. It's about getting the whole hormonal cascade Uh. functioning the way it was meant to. Yeah. And... Why was it dysregulated to begin with? It was dysregulated because the nutrients to support it, one, weren't there. But a huge amount of anti-nutrients and an enormous overdose of carbohydrates was throwing the whole system out of whack. And the body's going, well, this is the diet I've got. So I've got to make all of these really dysregulated adjustments just to survive. Mm. And once you eliminate all of that and start giving it the actual nutrition, it takes a little time for it to refactor and sort out all of those things and rebuild those mechanisms. Mm -hmm. But then it does. Mm -hmm. And that healing can take some time. And to get there, 
You need to be replete with all of the nutrition you need, and it's in the red meat, the eggs, the bacon, the butter. And that's why it's so important to eliminate those things that are working against you, like grains, like beans, like seed oils, like sugars and sweeteners, um, like lectins and oxalates and all of the anti-nutrients that you've been inundated with your entire life. Because they're not only are they directly causing inflammation, but they're competing mm-hmm. with the good stuff that might be coming along with your meals. The yeah. burger patty that's been vilified all these past 50 years, the body's like, a quarter pound? <laughs> I guess we're starving. Oh my gosh. Is that, so I've got to bring this up. We went to a new barbecue place recently because <laughs> we wanted some meat, right? And so you ordered the big three-meat three platter. Yeah. Yes. And it came on, you know, at a barbecue joint, you often get like a half sheet pan type thing with your food on it. It was, you didn't, maybe did you have three quarters of a pound total of meat on your three meat platter? Maybe. Maybe. It was turkey brisket and pulled pork. Yeah. And it was such a sad little pile of meat. (laughs) It was comical to a carnivore. Yes. Especially based on what they charged for it. Yeah, we will not be going back there. Uh, But it was comical. So your body, I mean, we were literally like, well, there's a barbecue joint up the street. Maybe we need to hit that one too. <laughs> we did not actually. But your body was not done after that little no. two-thirds pound of meat. Think about the, the McDonald's meal mm-hmm. that we've all had many times in our life. And that quarter pound or half, maybe a half pound of meat if you had two burgers or something. Mm-hmm. And then all the fries, the soda, and... The mm-hmm. bun and the various toppings. Mm-hmm. It it adds up to nothing. It adds up to very little nutrition. You get a lot of salt, mm-hmm. which could be good if you didn't have like a crap ton of carbs and all the weird oils that they were cooking this stuff <laughs> in on board as well. Yeah. So that stuff is competing. And you get rid of it. It's also competing for stomach space. Yeah. So the more of that stuff you eat, the less of the meat you're having. And you need to get the meat in the body. <laughs> you need the meat in the body. So where are we here? Okay, so the red meat, um, we talked about being replete, and we talked about getting the hormones going, and that's built primarily on... Fat. Fat. Holy cow. Now, I remember our daughter is a carbivore, and we were just talking about this. It comes up regularly. When she was a little little toddler... And we were feeding her convenience foods because I worked late at night at the dance studio. Um, I was, I knew it wasn't great, a great diet, a nutrient dense diet, but I was like, oh, at least it's low in fat. No matter what, it's low in fat. And she didn't even eat the cheese on her pizza. So, I mean, that was a great, right? That's, that's the mindset I was in. And little did I know, I was starving her of this essential piece of nutrition, which is fat to help her build her hormones. But I'd also been depriving myself of that for decades as well. Butter? No. (laughs) I mean, even when, I mean, I was never that skeptical of steak Mm -hmm. because I could cut off the visible fat that came with it. And I would cut that off and I would leave it. If I went to a like Ruth's Chris on a business meeting, yeah, oh, it'd be so good. But I'd cut that off because yeah, I was protecting my heart, mm-hmm. and I was just forsaking my hormones. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I was having a stack of bread next to it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's what they start you with, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we should talk about some of the questionable, questionable borderline things that get eliminated on carnivore. Now, if you want a pristine carnivore card and keep it in your possession against the carnivore authorities, (laughs) these aren't a question for you. No. But if you're like me, whose card was long ago revoked, you have to decide about dairy, coffee, 
and spices. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to talk a little bit about dairy because I really do believe that some people should eliminate dairy. And I really do believe it might be based on your ethnic background, your yeah, ancestry. There's a, there's a genetic component to it. Yeah. yeah. Now, I know that I have been tested up and down and all around, and I've done eliminations, right, of dairy with Whole30 and back when I was in my healing journey. And I do not seem to have an issue with eating dairy in moderation. I think any human who eats a lot of dairy is going to experience some of that congestion and yeah. flemminess. I yeah. think that's just the way dairy is. Yeah, I wonder about it, how the dairy is processed. Well, yeah. And that's a maybe a component of it, but yeah. I don't have any way to know like how I would respond on raw dairy because I've never had any. No. Bella is eating raw kefir drinking, I should oh. say, drinking raw, raw kefir lately, and she actually does it by um, getting kefir that's made for animals. Huh. <laughs> because that is legal to be sold. Interesting. But she's not having any issues with it. She's her. brave. She's very Because she'll eat a pretty raw steak. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not there. I haven't gotten to that level. No. So if you are seeking though an ultimate elimination diet, if you are having health issues, including autoimmune issues, you might want to make sure to cut the dairy. You might want to cut the coffee and you might want to cut the spices at least for a while. At least for a while because as an elimination diet, there is always the potential to experiment with adding something back in and seeing yeah. how it affects you. Yeah, the the dairy thing that that's interesting to me was um, a genetic analysis of people of Scandinavian descent mm -hmm. and showed that because their diet was so high in dairy for, I don't know, thousands of years, that they developed a, almost a resistance to absorbing calcium, which means that some of those individuals today need dairy or some calcium supplementation to get enough calcium. Mm. Um, we're both of Scandinavian descent. We are. We and are. Uh, I had gotten rid of dairy, but then I have since added back a little, but it's a really small amount. I don't even have it every day. Someone talks about dairy being a condiment. And I do think yeah. it, if you are able to tolerate dairy, I still think it's yeah. probably wise to treat it as a little condiment. I like to have a little bit of cheese for dessert with some butter on it. But again, it's not a lot. But what I was talking about is pretty oh. speculative. Yeah, it's not... I, it's not proven it's not, good yeah, science. It's not prescriptive. It's just something that was interesting to me. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, the, now what? there's there's a version of carnivore. Yeah. There's some versions of carnivore that are even more elimination y. But might be more inclusive y as far as as mm -hmm. health, energy. Yeah, it could be. Triple B and E, which is Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Now, I've heard it called beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. <laughs> but I think either works. You just have to switch the second two Bs around, mm -hmm. and then it's, th then it's the same. It's the same, yeah. So instead of triple B and E, it's triple B and E. Well, and Dr. Kiltz has... <laughs> I needed, I needed that to sink in for a moment. Dr. Kiltz has a version as well of a, it, like he calls it the baby, baby diet, babies. But anyway, it's pretty much beef, butter, bacon, okay. eggs. Yeah. And there's also the lion diet. The lion diet it is even more restrictive E. And that involves eating what? Red meat? Oh, I thought it was eating lions. It's not eating lions. That's the Michaela Peterson. I think she even coined that term. I think she did, yeah. But it's eating pretty much a ruminant animal. Period. Usually beef, maybe salt. Water. Water. Period. Now, she's very clear to state that this, for her, is how she has to eat for her health. And she still is considering it an elimination diet. She would love to be able to incorporate other things at some point in time. Yeah. Yeah. But as and of this point, she cannot tolerate other things. I hear her interviewed occasionally, and the last time I heard her, she had kind of 
was eating more, I want to say sheep, Mm -hmm. lamb, than beef even. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't even have aged beef. No. Because of some issue with it. Don't even get us started on the histamines. I don't know if that's her issue, but... (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> it's not something I've ever looked into, so I can't speak about no, it. No, no. So I've got a note here written in mixed case capital letters, but I'm not going to mimic how I would usually pronounce this. <laughs> and it goes something like this. So someone has heard what we've talked about, and now in their infinite wisdom, they're going to eliminate for us everything we've said with this piece of wisdom, mm. people just should eat a balanced diet. Everything in moderation. Mm-hmm. And you'll have perfect health. Perfect health. To which I say, carnivore is the ultimate balanced diet. <laughs> I might have said it I in think, a comment. Yeah, I think not. you might have. But yeah, it is the ultimate balanced diet. And what is incredible is, as we've said, it contains all the nutrients, especially if you eat eggs, red meat, and then you can also throw in some liver and fish, but not necess- it's not ne- even necessary to do that. And it is the ultimate balanced diet, and your body knows it. It responds with healing, with health, with hormone balance, with energy, a lack of brain fog, clarity. It responds to this diet that is so incredibly balanced. So you know how when you're telling me, you're, you're repeating back to me something that I said previously that you thought was stupid? Okay. And you put on that voice? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so in that voice, ask me why carnivores need to have supplement with electrolytes and iodine. So why, if, if carnivore is so balanced, why do you need to supplement with iodine and element and all those other electrolytes, huh? Tell me why, huh? That's a good question, me, <laughs> in your memory. <laughs> If you have if you have a spouse who does that to you, I want to hear about it in the comments. <laughs> um, and then I have to go, well, you don't really sound like that. <laughs> yeah. So the answer is that the cows that we're eating are grazing on pastures that have somewhat depleted soils. Mm-hmm. And so they're not getting the access to those minerals in the abundance that they would typically have. Mm -hmm. And apparently the iodine thing has to do with geography. Oh, If you're close to the sea, you get more iodine in the grass and then you can get it from the, or or from the eggs, from the chickens. Unless the chickens are supplemented with it, then you don't get it in the eggs as well. Um, So that is a fair question and Mm -hmm. it is is a concern that um, some people have. But then I would say, well, if this, if um, the my plate or whatever is a balanced diet, why do you end up with diabetes when you eat it? Mm. It doesn't seem like that's a balance. That does not seem well balanced. Uh, so the 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 best we can get, the most balanced diet we can get, is eating the proper human diet, which is high in fatty red meat. Have we made our point or have we just confused everybody? (laughs) Well, truth is, we are probably preaching to the choir for the most part. And then we'll get a few comments here and there that sound like this. Oh, (laughs) it's such a balanced diet. Then why? (laughs) I like that voice. (laughs) When I'm not using it against you. (laughs) It's kind of a funny voice. I like it. It's it's very interesting. (laughs) I don't think I've ever mimicked your voice back to you. No, you have not. That's probably wise. It's wise if I don't, too, but sometimes it just comes flying out, and then I have to go, okay, you don't really sound like that. 
but in my head, you kind of do. 